sun is shining, the weather is cold, and we have snow in the forecast for this week. Um, as always, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, throw them in the comments section. Um, if you need adjustment for any of the exercises, throw me a question and we will help work through it. Um, that's all I got. So, core this week. Um, just a little overview of what we're going to do and how we're going to break it up. Um, when I think of the core muscles, I think of the shoulder blades, the abdominals, and the glutes. Sort of that three-point harness that keeps your spine in alignment. So you have your shoulder blades in the top, your butt in the back, your abdominal muscles in the front. So if we think of our spine, we think of it being stable. <laughs> this is the worst. Um, stabilized this way. Um, what happens a lot when we end up with desk posture, when we're in that forward flex position, we get the reverse of that. So we get our pecs, our hip flexors, and our low back. And as you can see, my coordination mimics what the human body does. It does not support us um, the way it needs to. So we're going to work on the core and we're going to work on the shoulder blades, the abdominals, and the glutes. Um, and so to start that off today, the very first things that we need are either a band or a weight. I went with a five pound weight today. Um, do whatever weight feels most fatiguing after three sets of 10. Um, trial and error. You don't have to get it right the first time. I would start with, um, well, you can start with either a lighter weight than you think you can do. Um, so if you want to start with like a, a can of cream corn, do that. See if you can do three sets of 10. If you feel it in your shoulder blades, if you feel your muscles working, then that's the weight for you. Um, or you can start with a heavier weight, um, a 15 or a 20 pound weight. And if you can only do three sets of five or three sets of two, you know, for next time, you need to back that down half that um, weight. So a seven pound weight or a 10 pound weight and see if that does it for you. All right. So bent over row, we're going to just work our way down. So we're going to start the shoulder blades and then we'll get into the abdominals and then the glutes. So we're forward flexed. Have your hand however you want it. If you want a flat palm, if you want a bent fist. I honestly, I personally prefer a bent fist because every time I flat palm, it hits the button on my watch and she talks to me. She's lovely, but I don't, I don't need her in my life that much. All right, so over we are. I have a staggered stance. One foot in front, one foot behind. Just for a wide base of support, my feet are probably wider than hips width apart. Um, so let's see here. Let me come over here so you can see. Got a staggered stance, wider than hips width. It just gives me a firm base of support so that my abdominals can work in the way that I want them to work. All right, so we're bent over. Our arm is long. Our shoulder is coming out just a little bit. All right, so our shoulder is, we're not, we're not gonna hold it tight here. We're gonna let it come forward a little bit. See how my shoulder blade drops a little? All right, and then we're gonna row it back. We're gonna row it back. And this whole time, I want you to think tight butt, tight abs. So we're scooping the abdominals in. We're 150% not holding our breath. All right push it out a little bit so that that little push at the end is going to give you work on your serratus interior muscles so your boxer muscles um not not preparing to open the amazon boxes but like boxer muscles you like that <laughs> it's monday let me unwind um so you'll get a little bit underneath your armpit um, to work the serratus interior when you punch out, when you push that out a little bit, and then you'll get the full range of that, um, that row. So we're supported. Our abs are tight. Our butt is tight. And we're just going to row. So I'm not, I'm not coming up. I'm not closing the gap between my shoulder and my ear. I'm just coming straight back. Kind of like when you get a soccer goal and you go like, yes, but like that little bit at the end. All right. So we're punching forward. Coming up. All right, from the back, that looks like this. 
from the front. That looks like this. Do both sides. I can do a flat palm on this one because there's no watch. <laughs> Again, feet are about hips to hips wider than hip width. Jeez, and crow. Punch out, pull it back. All right, now, if you have a band instead of a weight, you can do the same thing. Wrap it twice around your hand. Put it under your foot. All right, so whatever foot is in front for you, put it under that. There we go. All right, if you want it tighter, give it a wrap. Um, usually darker, the darker the band, the more resistance. So, and I say usually because how they sell them in the store never, never coincides with that. Um, so if you're getting like a TheraBand, um, or if you get one from your PT, lighter is lighter. Um, so yellow, then red, then green, then blue, then black, as far as resistance goes. Um, all right. So again, if you don't have the opportunity to put it on the floor, you can always hold it with your hand. Gives you a little bit more of a impulse, so be aware of that. Um, but listen, we make it work, right? You can turn a little bit more to reduce that. There you go. Make it work however you need to make it work, right? All right, abdominals. Moving our way down the train. We're gonna get our big ball. I'm gonna see if my chair fits in here. All right, now, do as I say, not as I do for this one. I have a rolling chair because I have a rolling chair in my office. Um, don't do it on a rolling chair. Do it on like a kitchen chair. Uh, your feet need to be flat on the floor and you need to have a stable base. Again, not a stable base in the rolling chair, but we work with what we got. Having said that, if you only have a rolling chair, do it with a rolling chair. Seated crunch. So, big ball in your lap, isometric, upper, middle, and lower abdominal muscles, engaging um, your transverse abdominis, your pelvic floor, your shoulder blades, and your glutes. Love this one, all right? So, you're just going to, without holding your breath, push down and then come back up. So, your feet. Your feet are flat on the floor. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get like, let's see what we can do without dropping the computer or the ball. All right, so my feet are flat on the floor. My hips and my knees should be at about a 90 degree angle. There, that's where I wanna be. So, I can't see you, but hopefully you can see me. Oh, <laughs> All right, my feet are flat on the floor. I have a flat ankle, a straight line up to my knee, and then a flat leg up to my thigh. Big ball. Again, this ball's really big, so do whatever ball you have. Not like the small ones. Um, but if you have like a big pillow, if you have a bean bag, anything that gives you a little resistance as you crunch down, make it make it work for whatever works for you. Stack a bunch of couch pillows together. I'm I'm sure you're clever enough. You can you can math it out. And if you can't. Send me a message. We'll go through what you got. Make it work. All right, here we go. So, crunch. And relax. Breathe out. So, when you see those weight lifters and they're lifting like the ridiculously heavy weights and like the competitions and they're like, Hah! as they lift it, they're being incredibly intelligent about how they use their abdominal muscles and their pelvic floor. If you hold your breath, you push out against your abdominals, you push up against your heart, you push down against your pelvic floor, you increase that intra-abdominal pressure when you hold your breath so that you're pushing out against your abs, you're pushing out against your pelvic floor, all of the things that matter are getting pressure against them. You can't be efficient when you put pressure against the things that are trying to do the work. Um, when you breathe out, especially with a forceful exhale, like a, uh, it may sound really dramatic, but what you're doing is you're active.
actively engaging your abdominal muscles, you're actively engaging your pelvic floor and your diaphragm. So you're working those muscles to give you abdominal support. You're working those muscles to give you less intra-abdominal pressure, less pressure on your heart, less pressure in your, um, your bits, <laughs> less pressure pushing out against your abdominal wall. So everything can give you that strong, stable core control. So breathing out, not holding your breath, hugely beneficial. <sighs> Give it a hug. Why not, right? All right, so my feet are pretty much staying stable. I'm just coming down into a crunch. If you wanna work the obliques a little bit, you can roll it off to one leg. My table's in the way, so I can't really get that one over there. Ugh. But talk the whole time you're doing it. Um, put Alexa on and sing. Gosh, I hope she didn't hear me. <laughs> I'm just going to put the song on. Um, do something that makes sure you're getting air out of your body. You're not holding your body. Um, you're not holding your breath. Three sets of 10 for that guy. Two sets of 20. Whatever lets you feel fatigue without pain, um, discomfort, no back pain. No, I mean, I want you to feel muscle fatigue, but sharp pain, acute pain um, is not what these are about. So if it hurts, don't do it. Send me a message. We will work through it. Um, there's our Dr. Seuss rhyme for the morning. All right, last one. Hip extension. So we work the shoulder blades. We work the abdominals. Now we're going to work our hip extensors. We are going to do, oh, crush the plant. Um, a bent over hip extension. Find something to lean over. You can do it with a bent knee or a straight knee. I can hit the wall with this. <laughs> I'm supported. You can be supported at whatever height works best for your back. I have no problem with this. Fine. If you need something taller, I don't hate the idea of getting a ball. Challenges your abdominals a little bit while you're on it. And then we're going straight back. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right. So we're just leaning on the ball, resting forward, coming straight back. This is a butt exercise, okay? So if you're feeling it in your hamstrings, if you're feeling it all along here, just too much of a stretch yet, bend your knee. Take a load off your hamstrings and come up. This is a butt exercise, okay? So I want you to squeeze your butt. I want you to imagine there was a quarter between your cheeks and somebody's coming to take it, all right? That's how tight I want your butt. I want those, uh, those abdominals, those glute muscles to really be the focus of this and I want them to get tired, all right? If you're feeling it in other places, maybe you're feeling it in your standing leg, bend that knee a little bit. Take your load off a little bit, all right? Oh my gosh, I'm hitting everything. So... From this angle, here we go. We've just got a straight leg. All right, this is the exercise. This is the muscle that's doing all the work, squeezing at the top, squeezing at the top. All right, and if I feel it in my hamstrings, bent knee, squeeze at the top, squeeze at the top. So I'm not rotating out. You're gonna get a full, full shot here. I'm not going out like this. I'm going straight back. All right, straight back. This is butt, butt, butt. All right, I'm not arching my back. This part of my body isn't moving at all. All right, so forward lean, scoop the abdominals, support the abs, and then straight back, getting that butt firing. All right. And then same thing for that, three sets of 10, three times to fatigue if that works best for you. Um, if it hurts, don't do it. If you have questions, send them my way. I'm happy to answer them. And I hope everyone has an awesome Monday. And we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.